Hi, I'm Madeline Brill, and I'm 17 years old, and I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, um, let's see, it would have been three years and one week ago today. I had the classic symptoms. I was drinking too much water, I was going to the bathroom. I even, towards the end, before, right before I was diagnosed, I had, was starting to lose my eyesight. Um, but each of these symptoms was, it had, we found an excuse for it. For too much water, we had just flown back from Florida, so my mom figured that, hey, we live in high altitude, you're just really thirsty. For my loss of eyesight, it was, I just needed to go to the eye doctor and get a new prescription. And unfortunately, if I had known more about diabetes right before I was diagnosed, I would have been able to prevent ending up in the emergency room. But I didn't know enough, and so on, I was diagnosed on a Tuesday, and I was on the Monday before that Tuesday, I was actually sent home from school sick. But even the nurses didn't think about me having diabetes because I, it was flu season, so my stomach ache was excused as she was just had the flu. And on Tuesday, I went to school, and in science, I was so sick and I could not stay awake. Um, and looking back, I've realized now that my brain was probably at the point where it was telling me my entire body just to shut down. Um, and I went to my next class, which was math, and my math teacher looked at me and she said, Honey, you need to go home. You're too sick to stay at school. You need to call your mom. So I called my mom. She came and picked me up. And on the way, ironically, to the doctor's office, we stopped at McDonald's and got some French fries, which, looking back, French fries are not the healthiest, and they have a ton of carbs, which just made my blood sugar levels, which were already so high, just skyrocket even higher. But when we got to the doctor's office, um, my doctor looked at my feet and my hands, which the tips of them had just started to turn purple, and he said, um, you're going to the hospital. And so he did some tests and sent me to another doctor who did more tests, and they gave me some insulin. And after that insulin, they said, okay, this is what you need to do. And they gave you they give you a vial of insulin and a syringe. And this doctor is more old fashioned and they're teaching you how to draw insulin, how to give insulin, and it is like being hit by a train and then being told, You need to drive that train. And I had never heard of diabetes before. I had learned about it, but never to the extent of what I now needed to know to stay alive. And right as we were leaving this second doctor, he came running out after us and said, you can't leave, you can't leave. Um, and they had gotten my test back and my, the, the acid level, the pH level in my blood was so low that pretty much every time my heart beat, it was just sending poison through every organ, through every blood vessel. And he told me and he told my mom that she is so sick, I can't even send her in an ambulance because she won't survive the process of going through the emergency room. So he put me in my mom's car and he told my mom, you need to speed and if you get pulled over, you need to say, my daughter is dying, can you help me get to the hospital faster? And we drove all the way down the children's hospital and they rushed me into the ICU and I stayed there for a couple of days. And I don't really remember anything that went on because I was so sick that everything's just a blur. Um, I do remember though that I finally got to go home and I was so upset because one, I had been told, you have type 1 diabetes. Um, I was told that you now needed to check your blood, you now needed to give shots, and it was spring break, and so I had to spend my spring break in the hospital. I remember the first time reality really set in for me was I got home and my friend came over, and I was kind of in bed, I was still sick and weak, and she sat on my bed and she goes, so, how are you? And I just lost it, I started crying because Type 1 diabetes is a manageable disease, and lots of people live with type 1 diabetes, but when you're first told that you have type 1 diabetes, it's such a shock to you because at that time, it seems like you're never going to be able to be normal again. And it took me a while to finally get back into the swing of life, the swing of life, and over spring break, again, I ended up being put into a study where I got to be put immediately on the insulin pump and a continuous glucose monitor. And I think that was when I really started to settle into my nor more normal life. And I got used to using the CGM and the pump. I, I've only done shots for two days of my life because the rest of my diagnosis I was in the hospital and then I got out and they put me immediately onto the CGM. And ever since then I've been on the CGM and the insulin pump and I'm a swimmer. I swim year round. And so I get 
to, when I go to practice, I have to test my blood sugar before going in, and I have to be really high because no matter what, halfway through practice, I will always be low. So I'll get out, check my blood sugar, wait 15 minutes, and get back in the water. And the hardest thing I think about having type 1 diabetes is that there's no rhyme or reason for what happens. You can wake up one day at the same number as you woke up the day before. You can eat the same thing. You can exercise the same amount. And you will still, you could be high the, the first day and low the second day. It doesn't matter what you do. It's a guessing game. And there's really no way to stop the guessing. And that's why to find a cure, I mean, it would be great because Nobody wants to be told in a doctor's office, you have type 1 diabetes. And, you know, it's hard. And I was diagnosed on March 22nd, 2011. And I, hurt, I hold on to that day because I'm afraid that I was a certain person before I was diagnosed. And afterwards, I was a different person. And I hold on to that day because I don't want diabetes to control me. I want to be able to control it because diabetes is something I have to live with and it's a burden and it's there are days when it's horrible but then there are the days when it's great and you know you get to get out of class and you get to miss and you get to sit and you get to eat lots more candy than you would be allowed to without it um, and so in a way I think diabetes has definitely made me a better person and it's made it's helped me to really figure out who I can be and who I will be and I have to say maybe the worst possible thing about type 1 diabetes is that growing up in math class they always said to you, you're going to use this after, you're going to get out of school, you're going to graduate and you're going to use math. And, and every day in math class I sat there and I thought, I'm never going to use math. Who's going to use math? And then I got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and I have to use math. And so I have to count, count carbs and calculate my blood sugar and see how much insulin I have and what that's going to do to my blood sugar. So whenever your math teacher tells you, you're going to use this in the future, you should listen because there's a chance that you will use it in the future. <laughs>